Our first remembrance is that of Beatrice Hayes Hunt, who lived on Ashland Road in Arlington Heights, and have asked a good friend of mine to read this remembrance for us. Please welcome Amy Amundsen, who you may recognize her from the Robbins Library. Bernice Hayes Hunt was a former resident of Ashland Road in Arlington Heights and was living in New Pond Village in Walpole, Massachusetts the day she visited the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum with her daughter, Judy Scherzo of New Jersey. That was in April 2002. Since she did not want to be filmed, the museum recorded her recollections of the time she lived in Arlington and her memories of Cyrus beginning in the early part of 1919 when her family moved here. Bernice remembered distinctly about Cyrus and his shooting as large bow and arrows into the field across the street from his house on Oakland Avenue. She and her family lived on Ashland Road, which is above Oakland Avenue, and so it was natural for children in the neighborhood to observe Cyrus with his big bow, and he offered it to anyone who would like to try it out. It was as big as a man. I can still hear the bow twang, she recalled. We're going to interrupt Amy Amundsen's reading for a few moments to, so I can tell you about Cyrus Dallin being a champion archer. Cyrus Edwin Dallin, 1861-1944, was a champion archer. He learned the sport of archery from the native children and braves from the Ute and Paiute nations who lived near his cabin in Springville, Utah during the 1870s. He also did sculptures with an archery theme. You are looking at one now, and it's called The Archery Lesson. He also gave archery lessons to anyone who wished them up at the Arlington Heights. In 1914, the National Archery Association was formed and they asked Cyrus Dallin to do a design a gold medal. He um, did design the gold medal and when the competitors saw his name on the competition list, they didn't want to compete because he always won the gold medal. He designed a medal for the Newton Archery Club from Newton High School in Newton, Massachusetts. I wonder if they still award it today. In 1941, the National Archery Association decided to redo the medal. So they, Cyrus Dallin designed this new medal with the last arrow on the front. In 1904, the Olympics Committee decided to have the Olympics in St. Louis, Missouri. Cyrus Dallin was on the United States Olympic archery team. They won the bronze medal in the team competition in archery. The United States Olympic Committee graciously sent us a copy of the medal, which you can see, and which is quite impressive. So we have now a Cyrus Dallin, who was an internationally famous sculptor and painter, a civic-minded citizen, a friend and neighbor, and also an Olympian. And now back to Amy Amundsen reading Beatrice Hunt's recollections. Bernice said that Dallin was friendly and very outgoing. Children were always invited to his studio. She said, I was very shy and my friends were not interested, so we never went. In retrospect, I think, how could I not have done that? I didn't know he was famous. He was just a nice neighbor as far as I knew. She remembered going to the Locke School on Paul Revere Road in Arlington Heights. I remember our fourth grade in the assembly hall. I don't remember Cyrus being there, but there were several statues on the stage. After the Locke School, I went to the Junior High West. I was in the first class to go all the way through the school from the seventh grade. I graduated from there in 1926 and from Arlington High School in 1929. Bernice said, 
I remembered Ashland Road had a steep slope, perhaps 19 degrees. Once when the town wanted to buy a new fire engine, they brought it up to our street to test it, make sure it could navigate the hill, since there are so many hills in Arlington Heights. In the winter, we went sledding down Ashland Road through yard streets and embankments. We didn't have to worry about cars. We could also ski down, would have to sit down to stop before reaching Paul Revere Road, which was very busy with cars. Bernice recalled, Gray Street was a wonderful place to coast, though it was too long a walk back. So although we could do it, we didn't go as far as Monotony Pond. We had flexible flyer sleds in all sizes, not only in the winter, but in all seasons. We didn't go home until the street lights turned on. On occasion, there were some bad accidents. I recall someone was killed sledding down Appleton Street. For entertainment in the days before television, radio, and cell phones, we played games, talked, sang, and danced. My high school graduation present was a wind-up Victrola record player. Kids came from school, walking, or went to scout meetings. We played games like charades, hide and seek. We were busy all the time. We also roller skated on Elmore Street. During April, we would make May baskets for everyone, filled with jelly beans and cookies and decorated with cray paper, and secretly left them on doorsteps. We would go into town and get banana splits from the drugstore for a nickel. Bernice said it was a different life now. She remembered one Christmas her father brought home a radio and her uncle was standing in the living room trying to explain to all his kids how it worked, how those voices got in there. We put our first crystal radio in a big bowl to make it louder. She paused for a few moments and said, the town seems to have grown up.